This is Nick. This is Nick. Oh, wait. <laughs> No, this is Jack. I'm just messing with my car. I thought I saw Janet Yellen walk by too, by the way. (laughs) This is Nick. This is Jack. It's Thursday, the new Friday, July 13th. And today's pod is the best one yet. Are you ready for this, Yetis? Stocks hit their highest level in well over a year yesterday. Besties, call the Hamptons. Wall Street isn't taking a summer break this year. And we have a fantastic mix of stories. This is like a really good mix of stories today, Jack. For our first story, Domino's Pizza just did a huge 180. Domino's is partnering with Uber Eats for pizza delivery. Because the best minds in business change their minds. For our second story, we just got the inflation report for June. Yes, we did. Inflation's only 3%. Hot too shabby, Jack. By all accounts, that's wonderful news for America. But Americans are not happy about the economy, so Jack and I are going to tell you why. And our third and final story is Aretha Franklin. R-E-S-P-E-C-T, Jack. Aretha Franklin passed away five years ago, but the drama about her will didn't. And that reminds us of the greatest gift you can give your family. But before we hit that wonderful mix of stories, this is the best mix of stories we've ever done. I'm very excited about this show. I love this mix today, Jack. But Nick, ChatGPT, it's a smart, impressive robot, isn't it? ChatGPT is a whippersnapper, but Yetis Jack and I found a robot that's even smarter. Get this, Yetis. Chipotle's new robot has one job. Make guacamole. We're talking about the newest employee over at Chipotle is a guac making bot. And the name of this Chipotle guac robot. Oh, this is so good, Jack. Why don't you tell us? What's the name of this bot? It's the Avocado. The Avocado. <laughs> this machine will slice the avocados. This machine will dice your onions. This machine will cut core and peel that green goddess of buttery meat. Jack, what's this thing going to do if it gets the onions? It's not going to cry, I'll tell you that much. Oh, and Yetis, you don't have to worry about your fingers if you're using in the avocado robot guacamole maker. Yet he's a majority of Americans who cut their fingers cut their fingers slicing avocados. True story. And that's why this machine is the Edward Scissorhands of avocados. <laughs> it doesn't have to worry about cutting its fingers. Its fingers are metal. Now, Jack and I should sprinkle on a little bit more context here. Yes, you still need a human to mash the avocados. And to be honest, the mashing is the most fun part of the guacamole. But can we talk productivity now? Oh, we can talk about the numbers, Jack. What do we got? Currently, one batch of guac at Chipotle takes a human 50 minutes to prepare. But this avocado, it's making that batch in half the time. So here's what we're thinking, Yetis. Besties, this is what's bothering us. Guac is extra. Because it always costs so much to make the guac. And guac is always extra. Because nothing's truly free in this here world. But if making guac is half the price and now? And making guac is half the time now. Then should guac really be extra? Hey, Chipotle, we'd like a word. Yeah, on behalf of the Besties and Yetis, we're about to launch a class action slot. Lawsuit. Who's in, Jack? Let's hit our three stories. Visit guacainextralawsuit.org <laughs> and sign your name. 15 years before this song, two boys from the Northeast met in the dorm. They had an idea to cause a cultural storm. It's the best one yet, but the best is the norm. Jack, Nick, that's it. I don't even think they need to practice. 50%, that's a fat tip. T-Boy City on your at list. If you know, you know, because we ready to go. We can't wait no more, so just start the show. For our first story, Domino's. The stock just jumped 11% because Domino's is doing a 180. Domino's is partnering with Uber. Because the greatest business strength is being able to change your mind. Jack, can we talk about one of the greatest streaks in business? Yeah, apparently the greatest minds in business were running Domino's from 2010 to 2020. They got a lot of calories they're burning over at Domino's with this stock. Domino's stock was one of the best stocks in the world for that decade. Get this, Yetis. Over a whole decade, Domino's stock rose nearly 3 thousand percent. So when every other restaurant was zigging and joining the delivery apps like Uber and DoorDash, Domino's was zagging. Until today, if you wanted Domino's, if you wanted that meat lover's pizza, if you wanted that giant pizza that's actually made out of Oreo and it's in the shape of an Oreo, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I've never tried it, but... You had to download the Domino's app. But yesterday, Domino's CEO said this. Domino's CEO said that certain customers only order their delivery from the Uber Eats app. And Domino's wants their orders too. So finally, Domino's is joining Uber Eats. And Jack, can we talk about why this is such a shock news development? Because Domino's has been insulting, bashing, and undermining the delivery apps 
for years. I mean, this was borderline bullying at some points. This is kind of like the PGA Tour shaking hands with Live Golf. You know what I mean? Awkward. So, Yetis, here's the deal. Domino's was the largest food chain to not partner with the delivery app in the last 10 years. They were the last holdout. Domino's was a proud DIY delivery company. You want that za? You got to do the whole Domino's digital experience. You know, the Domino's <laughs> app, the, then the Domino's driver comes in the Domino's <laughs> uniform with the Domino's <laughs> thing on the Domino's car. They even had that fancy special Domino's heated delivery pizza box. It's insulation to keep it hot. It's like an anti-cooler. It was the innovation that this world needed. Domino's was so proud of that whole delivery end-to-end -end setup that they publicly insulted the delivery company. Get this quote Jack and I found from 2019. The CEO said they'd never let some random third-party company deliver their pizzas. The CEO said it was absolutely critical for Domino's to only do their own delivery. A couple years later, they doubled down on that position. Yeah, the CEO of Domino's went on to say, uh, delivery apps their business model, they don't even make sense. But now Domino's is pulling a huge 180. I mean, Jack, this is like a vegan ordering a meat lover's pepperoni <laughs> pie. It's eating its words big time. I mean, Jack, this is like you embracing <laughs> ceviche Wednesday. Finally. Now that I know it's not sashimi. I mean, we all know it's inevitable, Jack. Just come to the light side. Now, Yetis, there is some nuance to Domino's decision yesterday. It is still going to be those lovely, beautiful Domino's delivery drivers dropping off that Domino's pizza in their Domino's uniform in the Domino's cars. But now you can hail that that pizza starting in the Uber Eats app. Well, Wall Street thinks that millions of new diners are going to swipe right on Uber, on Domino's. And Jack, where are we seeing the numbers here? Domino's thinks they'll sell a billion dollars more pizza per year because they're in the Uber Eats app. And that is why investors bumped Domino's stock up 11% yesterday. <laughs> Ceviche Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jack, what's the takeaway for our buddies over at Domino's? The best minds in business can change their minds. Yetis, look, our society, it celebrates conviction and it celebrates consistency. But there's a fine line between conviction and stubbornness. But great leaders do change their minds. They are comfortable admitting that past strategies don't work anymore. Jeff Bezos says it's healthy to have an idea tomorrow that contradicts today's ideas. Steve Jobs was famous for pulling huge 180s on a regular basis, actually on a daily basis. Yet he's in politics, changing your mind is known as flip-flopping, and that's not a good thing at all. But in business, we think changing your mind can be a necessary pivot to a new strategy. With new information, new circumstances, you must be willing to change your opinion. Besties Domino's just changed its mind. And thanks to that flip, it's worth a billion dollars more. For our second story, inflation just did something. I, this is shocking. You, just, you take it from here, Jack. You take it from here. Inflation fell in June to a basically normal 3%. And yet, despite that, everyone still thinks the economy is terrible. So we'll tell you why. Yet he's besides the jobs report, the monthly inflation report has become the economic data you need to know. I mean, Jack and I have been telling you, the inflation report, it gets all the attention. It's the celebrity of economic reports. It's called the Consumer Price Index. Nick and I jumped in T-Boy style, and we got fantastic news from the month of June. Get this, inflation was down to just 3%. That's it. Can we sprinkle on some context? I would love for you to sprinkle on some context. Last July, inflation was 9%. Now it's down to 3%. Which is very close to our goal of just 2% inflation. We're so close. Now, to be clear, Yetis, prices are still very high. 3% inflation means prices are still 3% higher than last year. And last year, we were all very angry that prices were so high because of inflation. You did not order a frittata unless you were on a very special occasion. So 3% more expensive than very expensive? Yes, Jack. We understand the anxiety around prices. But it is fantastic news that the Fed's dramatic interest rate policy is working to stop inflation. But Yetis, here's the funny thing. You probably disagree. In fact, most people in America probably disagree with our label that this was fantastic news. And it's because of a profound change that Nick and I have noticed about the United States. Because today, when you look at the numbers, pessimism is the norm. In America today, 
pessimism has become the norm. If you ask any American about anything America, chances are they're pessimistic about it. It's not just us, it's the numbers. According to Gallup, Americans' faith in the government and its institutions are the lowest they've ever been in U.S. history. Jack, would we be more specific, which institutions? All the institutions. <laughs> We're talking Congress, Supreme Court, the news industry, trust in all those institutions is at a record low. Organized religion, the military, police, public education. All of those institutions are seeing trust at or close to a record low. And the pessimism? It's bipartisan, too. Yeah, I mean, this one's kind of funny, Jack, but both Trump and Biden have the lowest approval ratings ever. No presidents have lower average approval ratings than Presidents Trump and President Biden. But, Jack, we got to talk about the biggest shocker of all. The biggest shocker is Americans' pessimism about their economy. Because, get this, Americans feel worse about the economy today than they did in 2008. The year we had a financial crisis. And 2009. When we had 10% unemployment. We're talking Americans feeling historically awful about the United States economy and everything else. Pessimism has become the norm in America today. Which is why Jack and I crafted this takeaway. So Jack, what's the takeaway for our buddies who are everyone in America? When it comes to the economy, America is the clear number one. Yetis, Jack and I are looking at the data right now and we are not pessimistic. We are optimistic. In fact, we are rebelliously optimistic about this. Being optimistic is rebellious in America right now, but we are, and here's why. Because if you compare the United States to the G7 club of developed economies, we are number one by far. The U.S. has the lowest inflation and the highest GDP growth of all those seven countries. Oh, you want to compare us to China who is supposed to pass our GDP in a few years? China's actually suffering from deflation right now, which is worse than inflation. Just last week, Jack and I told you the unemployment rate in the United States was at its lowest level in 60 years. We also told you this week that the women's workforce participation rate hit a record high in America. And Jack, can we talk about the stock market, my friend? Stocks are up 17% this year. They're only 5% off the record high we had in 2021. We're so close, even if Dogecoin isn't quite there right now. Some of the social pessimism about America, we understand, totally. And the economy, it isn't perfect, we know. But when you look at the data, America's economy is the best in the world. If you want to be patriotic, be patriotic about the economy. And now a word from our sponsor, Athletic Greens. Yetis, AG1 is the daily foundational nutrition supplement that supports a whole body health. We spend time and money to protect and take care of our most valuable things. Oh, and Jack, what's like basically the most important part of this podcast? Besides you? The microphone. <laughs> it's, and yeah, it's the microphone. It's uh, We need that microphone. Our microphones are so important, we wrap it up like it's a little baby. Well, Yetis, we tried AG1 because we want to protect our bodies too. I drink AG1 in the morning on the way to the studio. Because AG1, it makes us feel like we're taking care of our minds and our bodies and our health. And frankly, we definitely need all three of those things. AG1 is 75 high quality vitamins, probiotics, and whole food sourced ingredients in one tasty scoop. If you're looking for a simpler, effective investment for your health, try AG1. You'll get five free AG1 travel packs and a free one-year supply of vitamin D with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash tboy. That's drinkag1.com slash tboy. Check it out. Mudwater. Mudwater is a coffee alternative made with four adaptogenic mushrooms and Ayurvedic herbs. It leans on the mushrooms hard, nature's X-factor organism, to deliver you energy. Jack, what do I got to do to get a mayataki over here? <laughs> you get the morning boost you need without the caffeine high of coffee. And Jack, can we talk about the temperature lately? It's been hot. It's been record-breaking <laughs> heat, so Jack and I have made a seasonal switcheroo to our mudwater recipe. Yeah, iced mudwater. It's a thing. It makes mudwater with hot water just like you usually do. But then you pour it over a tall glass of ice. I like to mix in whole milk and a splash of maple syrup, too. Throw in a little cotton candy, why don't you, Jack? <laughs> Yeti's Mud Water, it is so much more than a hot beverage. If you're ready to try out a coffee alternative, give Mud Water a shot. Go to mudwater.com slash tboy to support the show and use code tboy for 15% off. That's M-U-D-W-T-R dot com slash T-B-O-Y and use code tboy for 15% off your order.
For our third and final story, Aretha Franklin, the late queen of soul, finally got clarity on her will and final testament five years after she actually died. It shows that the greatest gift you can give your family is a plan. The legendary Motown singer Aretha Franklin just made news this week. Aretha Franklin, you make me feel like a natural woman. Aretha Franklin, cha 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 chain of fools. R-E-S-P-C-T. Yes. Find out what it means to me. Well, it wasn't just that playlist. Aretha Franklin sang at President Obama's 2009 inauguration, among a lot of other lifetime accomplishments. But in 2018, Aretha Franklin passed away in Detroit, her favorite city. Yet he's Jack and I noticed that Aretha Franklin suddenly popped up in the news. And why was that, Jack? Because Aretha Franklin's music, although she's deceased, her music is still very valuable. Yes, it is, because each of those songs we just mentioned is generating royalties every single stream, every single minute. How valuable? Well, let's look at Bob Dylan, Bruce Springsteen, and Stevie Nicks. Well, all of those legendary musicians just sold their music catalogs for over a hundred million dollars each. That gives you a sense of how valuable her music is after her death. But Jack, can we talk about the problem that's going on with Aretha Franklin right now, man? She wrote two different wills. She left two different wills behind with two different sets of plans for her estate. Yeah, Yetis, get this. One of those wills is dated to 2010 and the other of those wills is dated 2014. Naturally, you think the 2014 will is more valid than the older one. It's like Price is Right rules. You know, like chronological <laughs> order here. It's the 2014 one. That's the will you think they'd be going for. I don't think that's the Price is Right rule, but let's go for it. I'm just rounding up on this one. Well, here's the wild part. That 2014 will, the one you'd think naturally you go with it was found in her couch yeah that 2014 will was literally stuck between some cushions that's what we're talking about a crumpled piece of paper the 2010 older will that was stored safely in a locked cabinet seems much more official doesn't it i'll take the lock cabinet lawyer version over the one that was found under the couch by kendall roy now the stakes are big for aretha franklin's survivors because both those two wills had some meaningful differences so here's the news this week a jury reached a decision a jury reached a decision and they have decided that the more regal resting place of that last will and testament it does not matter no the valid document is the more recent document. The valid document is the 2014 will. The couch cushion will is the winner. Did it underline Kendall's name or did it cross it out? It's a fair question. So Jack, what's the takeaway for our buddies who are everyone in the economy? The greatest gift you can give your family is to plan for your death. Look, Yetis, we have no doubt that Aretha Franklin loved her family. But lack of clarity regarding her will left her family with five years of drama, stress, and a lawsuit. Okay, so full disclosure, Jack and I have both just had recent talks with our parents about this exact kind of issue. So, like, we wanted to share it with you. And both of us, newly parents ourselves, put our own death plans in place. For example, Jack, what did you put in your will about this <laughs> podcast, man? If I die unexpectedly... It's Nick's job to train Wilder to replace me as his co-host. When I say whip up the takeaways, <laughs> you have to whip up the takeaway. Funny thing, Yeti. Socially, we see death conversations as major downers. We see them as depressing, as morbid, as something you shouldn't do. Just brush it off and never think about it. But Nick and I have recently discovered that these conversations about death, they can be positive, forward-looking, optimistic, and powerful. And frankly, they can be the most bonding thing you do with the important people who you love. For instance, it's an opportunity for parents to think about their grandkids if they got them. And maybe set up a little tax-efficient way to give to their new grandkids. Just sign here, here, and there. <laughs> an initial there. Because Yeti's the greatest gift you can give your family is a plan for your death. Jack, can you whip up the takeaways for us for the new Friday? Domino's Pizza's doing a 180. They're joining Uber Eats for delivery. Because the best minds in business change their minds. For our second story, the inflation report for June came in at 3% which is down almost two-thirds from last year. When it comes to the economy right now, America is the clear number one. And our third and final story, a jury just decided which will was valid for Aretha Franklin's estate. Yet yeah, is the most valuable thing you can give to your family. It's a plan. Yetis, these next three stories weren't in the pod, but we think you need to know today. First, Disney's second time comeback CEO Bob Iger is extending his contract by an extra two years. We're going to have old Bob 
through 2026. And second, yesterday was the last chance for the Actors Union to avoid a strike. If no agreement was reached with the movie studios, then both actors and writers are on strike at the same time. And finally, we just got news from Carolina that Succession snagged 27 Emmy nominations. That was the leader. Ted Lasso got 21, White Lotus got 23, and The Last of Us got 24 Emmy noms. And Cousin Greg got zero. <laughs> now, Jack, <laughs> time for the best fact yet. This one sent in by Alexis Watson from the sweet loving city of Salt Lake City, Utah. In May 2023, just a couple months ago, Apple's market cap briefly surpassed the entire United Kingdom. All right, yeah, here's what we're saying. Apple's value as a company was greater than the entire British stock market. Apple was more valuable than Rolls-Royce, then Willy Wonka, then Burberry. I'm running out of British firms here. <laughs> Apple was bigger <laughs> than the entire footsie combined. combined. Yetis, you look fantastic for the new Friday. And if you want to help grow the pot, one of the best things you can do is turn to that buddy in the line today when you're getting lunch and say, hey, H-Y-H-T-B-O-Y. Or toss it on the gram and type hashtag H-Y-H-T-B-O-Y. Have you heard the best one yet? Nick and I will see you tomorrow. If you know, you know. And before we go, congratulations to Yeti Jesse Dovett, who just passed his CPA exam over in Oregon. He's also a CWAC, a single income with a kid. <laughs> we love it. And Kay Anise, happy 18th birthday down in Lake Worth, Florida. And Bestie Bonnie has a question for Cole over in Austin, Texas. Cole, you recently asked Bonnie to marry you, but Bonnie, he would <laughs> like to turn the table on you right now. <laughs> Bonnie would like to ask you, to marry her. Cole, will you say yes to this dress? Will you say fine to this dime? You absolutely should, and that is a win to celebrate. And to anyone else celebrating something amazing today, make it a T-boy. Celebrate the wins. This is Jack. Nick and I both own stock of Apple and Chipotle, and I own stock of Disney.